Hi everybody, this is the Liturgy of the Word for Wednesday in the 10th week of Ordinary Time. Let's sing Amazing Grace. everyone and welcome uh, to our Liturgy of the Word for Wednesday uh, of the 10th week of ordinary time, of ordinal time, really. And uh, again, uh, let me just say, please listen very carefully as Dan reads the first reading today, a very important one for us to ponder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's begin by, uh, first of all, the Lord be with you, and let's ask God for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at, our prom at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Ahab sent to all the children of Israel and had the prophets assemble on Mount Carmel. Elijah appealed to all the people and said, How long will you straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. The people, however, did not answer him. So Elijah said to the people, I am the only surviving prophet of the Lord, and there are 450 prophets of Baal. Give us two young bulls. Let them choose one, cut it into pieces, and place it on the wood, but start no fire. I shall prepare the other and place it on the wood, but shall start no fire. You shall call on your gods, and I will call on the Lord. The God who answers with fire is God. All the people answered, Agreed. Elijah then said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one young bull and prepare it first, for there are more of you. Call upon your gods, but do not start the fire. Taking the young bull that was turned over to them, 
They prepared it and called on Baal from morning to noon, saying, Answer us, Baal. But there was no sound, and no one answering. And they hopped around the altar they had prepared. When it was noon, Elijah taunted them. Call louder, for he is a god and may be meditating, or may have retired, or may be on a journey. Perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. They called out louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until blood gushed over them. Noon passed, and they remained in a prophetic state until the time for offering sacrifice. But there was not a sound. No one answered, and no one was listening. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. When the people had done so, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been destroyed. He took twelve stones for the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord had said, Your name shall be Israel. He built an altar in honor of the Lord with the stones and made a trench around the altar large enough for two measures of grain. When he had arranged the wood, he cut up the young bull and laid it on the wood. Fill four jars with water, he said, and pour it over the burnt offering and over the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he said, and they did it a third time. The water flowed around the altar, and the trench was filled with the water. At the time for offering sacrifice, the prophet Elijah came forward and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant and have done all these things by your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, Lord, are God, and that you have brought them back to their senses. The Lord's fire came down and consumed the burnt offering, wood, stones, and dust, and it lapped up the water in the trench. Seeing this, all the people fell prostrate and said, The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Word of the Lord. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. They multiply their sorrows who court other gods. Blood libations to them I will not pour out, nor will I take their name on my lips. Keep me safe. ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, and delights at your right hand forever.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass away from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, I ask you to uh, ponder and to listen closely to what Dan has to say to us as far as the first reading is concerned today. And so here, and if you've been reading uh, and pondering uh, the scriptures as they've unfolded for us on Monday and Tuesday, here we have the great battle between Yahweh and Baha, the great showdown. Who are we going to follow? Yahweh or these Canaanite gods, these Baal gods, these fertility gods. And so again, here's the drought. Ahab blames Elijah in his God for the drought. Elijah blames Ahab, Jezebel, and their God for the drought. So here's the big question, and here's the big uh, um, a showdown. Now, it's not between Elijah and Ahab and Jezebel. It's really about Baal or Yahweh. And we have these questions all the time. Am I going to go to church or am I not going to go to church? Am I going to follow the teachings of God? Am I not going to follow the teachings of God? And in uh, the reading today, this was very important because the people were wondering, who did bring the drought? Who should we follow? Is it, if it's one or the other, which one's going to bring rain? That was their big concern. And if they back the wrong horse, there's going to be trouble. And they don't know what to do. And so here comes this great big showdown, and you see the, dr the drama, the absolute drama by these, these uh, priests and prophets of the Baals and all the different crazy things they do. And then there's Elijah, just offers a simple prayer, no drama. All of a sudden, God comes down. And all through uh, the, the story about Elijah, we're seeing these miracles occur, but only at appropriate times, so these choices are being made. And so, folks, all the while, this scripture reading for us is about us and about choices, about the choices you and I make. Am I going to follow God? Am I going to follow Jesus? Or am I going to follow uh, the secular world's view of things? Am I going to use, follow the political opinions of my party in things? Or am I going to follow the ways of Jesus Christ? These choices are before us all the time. And let me say one final word, and then we'll conclude here for today. In the end of it, whenever all the prophets of the Baals are killed, it isn't about killing. Again, we have to look, all the scriptures are inspired by God. We said that last, last week. But it doesn't mean every single word is inspired, as I said before, that we have to go beyond the words. We have to go beneath the words and, and, and uh, see what God is trying to say to us today. And again, the great axiom that we've been following, there's nothing unchristlike in God. So what is that ending of the first reading about today when all the throats were slit of these prophets of Baal? Well, it's not about killing at all. It's about removing evil. God wants us to remove evil from our midst, not by slitting anybody's throat. That's not God's way. Nothing, you know, that's not Christ's way. But we need to uh, be vigilant about making proper choices uh, in our lives as followers of Jesus Christ and remove evil from our world and from our lives. Here's our questions for today. How does Jesus fulfill the law and the prophets? And which commandment do you think Jesus is talking about in the gospel today? One quick word about the gospel. I wonder what Matthew and Paul, uh, the conversation they would have about the law, because Matthew is saying, None of it's going to be uh, gotten rid of until it comes back again. And then Paul's saying, let's get rid of it right now. So uh, you can see kind of that controversy going on in the church, even as the scripture writers were talking. And so which one is it? Is it a both and with all of that? 
uh, rather than an either or. God bless you and looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow.